Well, hello everybody, and welcome to a fine, wet spring morning on a brand new map. It's Farming Simulator 19 rather than 17 for once, and we're playing with seasons. Lovely, lush green trees, and we're on a season ready map. It's called Ayers Halt, and this is a map really up my street. So far, mainly play the mixture of um, UK and US maps. This this is more of a European map and um, we're into late spring because I, I started playing the map actually uh, before I started recording. I, I just wanted to see how things were working out and frankly you missed a lot of plowing with uh, these lovely two pieces of machinery here. Now I Assault uh, is a map that is not available in Mudhub. Um, it was announced over on FS Nation uh, about, I think, a week ago. Um, a guy from Denmark called Datalund has created it, and I really like it. It's a four times map, so it's pretty huge. In fact, going at it in, in single player mode here might, might be a little bit crazy, but yeah, we're gonna give it a shot anyway. So, as you can see, there's a huge, huge. Um, farmyard and actually when when you start out in the game you don't necessarily start with um, the entire yard being yours because there's a pig farm down the back here and um, there's a cow uh, hen further up the road there and uh, we got chickens and we got a workshop and wash station further down this is one of our starter sheds we got a couple of um, cultivators sitting in there um, this lovely big shed over here is a fine addition where we can fill up uh, you got tanks for liquid fertilizer and herbicide um, right now we just got a couple of sewing machines sitting in here because they've already been out working so down a bit of a rest right now we do have a planter that we're gonna get around to sorting out in a minute got a lime station up here um, what I really like about this map as well is that these aren't just infinite buy points directly on your farm. You have to fill these up yourself, which I think is, is just brilliant. So there are little fill points here. You open the door, you, you tip in. Uh, there are buy points on the map. Uh, obviously, it being a four times map means that um, it's quite a distance sometimes to drive, but I, I kind of like it. Now, I can't remember if we can go through this door. No, we'll pop in through the gate here instead. So in here, we've got some of our self-propelled machinery. Well, um, what you're seeing on this map right now is, is a mixture of the starter equipment that came with the farmer, new farmer. And I have bought in some extra. Yes, I did cheat in some money because trying to take on a map this size in single player means you need to bump up the machinery. But we are kind of we're done cheating now, so we've got 252,000 still in the bank. Um, we're paying out about 800 every day on build, building maintenance, um, and there's a little bit left, obviously, for um, buying seeds and fertilizer and all that kind of stuff, and just a bit of a buffer. So, but from now on, it's it's a question of whether we can make this um, make this farm, uh, you know run at least cost efficiently hopefully be able to make some money and buy some extra fields but yeah so i bought in a self-propelled sprayer bought the horse one from the horse bank. the john deere came uh, with the starting equipment actually one of my biggest concerns right now is we don't have enough money for another harvester and while this is a very nice harvester the fields on this map are really big so it's going to be interesting to see we we might actually have to lease another harvester at some point once once harvest get going but we're still a little ways away from that so yeah we had a couple of plows over here um i got a few extra pallets of herbicide sitting there before i realized there was a tank on the shed over there in the background and i got one of these um overloaders uh the Bressel lardy big pack uh, which is a really nice mod for loading up big bags when you need to take them out to the field for your cedar, for example. So, you've seen some of the machinery already. Uh, there's a bit of it that's out working, and um, we've got a few jobs to get through today as well. But 
I'll try to get around the farm so you can see a bit of the farmyard in here. I've tried to keep most of the baling equipment. We have been out making hay. Thankfully that was yesterday before the rain really came in. I decided to cut grass in late spring rather than wait till early summer. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to get a second cut in. So we've got a nice mower set that was part of the starting equipment as well, liner. Now I swapped out the baler. The starting baler was a, a round baler and um, I, I went for squares instead with Massey Ferguson here and uh, part of the Anderson DLC stacker. So over here I do have a truck, we'll see that in a little while, but got the cramper and the Wilson trailer for moving some livestock. We've been buying in cattle, we might be bringing in more. And we also have a pig farm over on the other side here, but um, I haven't bought any pigs in yet. Got a forage wagon because we need to pick up stuff for silage and the gear to actually uh, try to compress that. Here's a good stack of the hay that we brought in. Uh, the pallet is still lying here and I made a little bit of the mess of the stacking already, as you can see, but at least it's, it's under cover, so it's nice and dry. Actually, I should probably check that since we're here, just to make sure, yeah. So that's fine. Um, the outer ones here are, are not deteriorating. Down here, we got a plant for making TMR, our total mix ration. It's a really nice mod. Uh, I haven't used it yet because I, I have a feed mix and we brought in just a little bit. Two huge, huge silage pits here. Uh, it's going to be a challenge to see if we're ever going to get those filled. This is uh, a pile of grass that we brought in uh, yesterday. Um, we started in the morning where we're still a little bit wet and um, I, I cut and picked up quite a bit of grass. So it's about 160,000 liters sitting in, in that pit right now. So that will be getting turned uh, so we get some silage later on. I do have, so this is the cow shed up here and in here I got one of the Anderson feed mixes, water tanker and just a little bit of shovels and stuff like that to keep things going. Uh, this shed is currently nice and empty. Oop, I'm opening the wrong door. There we go. So as you can see, you get a huge amount of space on this map once you buy in the whole farmyard, obviously. It does cost a bit extra. Um, here is our cattle. It's a really nice big yard here and a really big shed. So as you can see, I haven't put straw down uh, because during spring, summer, early autumn, I'm probably just going to keep it like this and um, leave it to run for slurry. And then in winter, we'll put in some straw and that will generate manure with the Seasons mod now instead. Uh, the water trough, I'm just going to hop this fence here. Move out of the way, Bessie. So yeah, I, I went straight for the um, milk producing cattle here, but it's going to take a while before they start actually creating any milk for us because um, it takes a little while. Here's the water trough and I installed one of the Seasons water pumps to help keeping it topped up. I don't know when we get to summer, I might still have to use the tanker to, to try and keep it topped up. Um, up at the back of here we just got one more shed and that's just a sort of open shed. Put a few extra hay bales and I bought in a little bit of hay and silage to be able to make some mixed ration when we brought the cows in before we'd done the uh, first cut. Obviously here's the milk tank. Now as I said with seasons, it takes a while before your cattle starts producing. Um, they need to get fertile and everything first, so it'll take a while before we start seeing any milk. But when you do buy cattle, uh, here's the cattle press to, to let them in. Um, down this little road around, here's the exit on the other side of the shed. So if you're running through, scooping up and cleaning, you just drive straight through. But if you move around here, we have a pretty huge slurry pit as well. I bought a slurry tanker with the aim of uh, trying to cut down the cost of fertilizer because with the size of fields it's it's pretty huge. I hope the sound is okay by the way. There's obviously a, a lot of rain going on here but it's fine. So yeah, uh, we got the silo. One for fertilizer, one for seed and the line behind it. I'll just pop down the side here as well and Look in here, here's a couple of the big bags that I mentioned earlier. 
I think one of these are empty. Let's have a look. Yeah, that one's empty. This one still has wheat in it because right up here is our chicken shed. So we've got a nice pile of chickens here and uh, they're producing some eggs. So one of the things I might be doing today is to just run down. We've got a good deal with the uh, campsite. That's a bit uh, away from the farm. They buy our eggs. Over here is the silo system. I really, really like this. It's a really cool diesel. So you've got these indoor silos and you drive in through here and here's your tip point. And then you can drive back out again on the other side of the building. Uh, you got, I think it's 750,000 liters of capacity. So even with big fields, hopefully we're not gonna run short of silo capacity. Here is the loading point. So you're all good on that side. Finally, I think this is the last of, of the main sheds. This is all part of starting equipment. So you get this trailer that you can use for um, silage and chaff as well, um, an auger and two Kroger Agro liners as well. So it's a very, very decent amount of starting equipment. Even if you decide to start this map just on plain new farmer, for example, you, you get a really good amount of, of equipment to get started with. I tend to use this shed over here for tractors. Like I mentioned, they're not all in there right now, but we got a couple. Um, we got the um, John Deere 6230 here. That's part of your starting equipment. I then bought in a Case Optum 270 and the Case Puma 185 uh, is part of the starting equipment as well. And there's another case, but it's up in a field doing some work right now. Um, down this side of the farm here, here's the pig shed. It is a huge pig facility. Now, as I said, I haven't bought any pigs in yet. Um, hopefully, we'll, we'll do that, but I just want to see how we do on money before we get too carried away. Um, and we also got this mighty building. Now, judging by the fact that it's got the, the vents along the side here, I'm taking this to be, it's, it's sort of general storage facility, but I would take this to be root crop storage. So that's a huge building to have on the site as well, which is fantastic. Down the back, we just got a few extra bits. There's some manure pits, um, there's room for the pigs to move around outside. Some decorative items and places to park equipment. It just has a really good feel to it, this map. I, I just feel like the whole yard is well thought out. It's not super, super narrow. You, you're you gonna need big equipment on this map and, and there's gonna be room to move it around. There's the slurry pump for the pigs as well. So I just like the fact that, um, yeah, it, it, it feels like a, a map that I'm quite happy to settle into and, and, and really get into. So I'm about 16 hours into the save game now when you join me. And this is the first episode. There will be more, trust me. I am really enjoying playing on this map. So the reason I didn't start recording straight away is I've in part taken my time just to, you know, there's been a lot of people streaming on, on, um, on YouTube on maps right now. And I, I wanted to check out the map a little bit first. So I haven't just fast forwarded through all the seasons and stuff, but um, yeah, I, I played a bit with this and I really enjoyed it. So this is the one that I'm gonna be doing as a series for now. There's a little bit more up here I forgot about. So here is, uh, this is part of our starting equipment, this little forage cutter here. I'm, I'm not sure it's gonna, gonna cut it, pardon the pun. Um, in the long run, but I've, I've kept it just for now because we might see whether we're going to split a field in part to silage and part to just corn. And then I bought in this um, horse pack um, slurry spreader. It's got a huge width, it's got 36 meters, although there's only 21,000 liters in the tank. Over here, there's the um, fuel pump. Again, like the other parts of the map, this is not an infinite fuel supply you are gonna have to bring in the fuel and, and fill it up here's a nice case red man truck as you can see we've got a lot of case tractors so I thought that would be appropriate 
this is really useful for doing some of the long supply runs. So if you're picking up seed and fertilizer to put into the uh, storage bins on the farm, it's, it's great to have a truck to get around. We've got a fully capable workshop in here. And we're actually going to be using that today because one of the things we've got to do once we get past here is a water fill point. It doesn't cost. And uh, then there's like a wash bay down the back of the building here. So I've got the um, Case 3540 uh, lime and fertilizer spreader sitting here. The reason it's sitting here is it, it did really need cleaning, but I actually need to refill it and there's one more field left to run some fertilizer on. If I can, I do have crop destruction on. So I need to drive up to one of our fields and have a look whether I'm gonna destroy the grain. Otherwise we're gonna to have to use the sprayer to fertilize that one. Two other fields have been fully fertilized. So I'm just gonna hop into the map now. So you're able to see what fields we have. And these are all the fields that you start out with. So here we are in the map. Um, this area in the middle here is, is the main yard. And if I just go in, you can see that the pig enclosure, the cattle pastry, the chicken coop area, and the brewery area and everything, they are separate areas that you have to buy. So I did buy those in. But apart from that, I haven't bought any really additional. And so we've got field 30. Um, now on this zoom level, these fields don't look that big. Field 32 is a grass field. 31 is the one that's still being planted. I'm putting corn on that field now that we're into late spring and it's good ground temperatures. We've got a huge forest area up here on the hill um, that came with the farm. So when we get into autumn winter, that's really good potential for, for doing some serious logging up there. And then we got field 29, which I put wheat into, uh, which is a massive field. And then finally, up next to the horse paddock, we own field 14, which is a, a more moderate size. Um, so yeah, you can you can see the um, uh, different fruit types. This map also supports um, a whole range of additional fruit types, and they have been integrated with seasons as well, from what I can see. So we've got alfalfa, we've got rye, millet, clover, and triticale. Um, one of the things is to be aware of is if I go in and look at the price, so you can see this field here, field 15, is 662,000. So the cost of the area is 520 for field 17, even if we're gonna start picking up a couple of extra ones just around the field. We're talking hundreds of, of thousands of euros here. So there's no sort of um, easy, simple way to do this. The, the farm has to become profitable. We only have 250,000 left now. Um, so yeah, so the next thing I was going to do is um, I was going to just pick up uh, the car and then we're going to collect some eggs. Um, we're going to sell those down the campsite and then I need to go down by the dealership and pick up a few spare parts because we're going to spend a bit of money today um, on two things. So unfortunately when I took over the farm most of the equipment were pretty basic. There are no upgrades on it or anything like that. Um, it's a little bit ahead of time, but in particular, our horse sprayer, we're, we're going to need to get out and do some preemptive spraying soon. Uh, there's a few traces of, of, of weeds in some of the fields, so we want to start thinking about getting rid of that. But um, I need to get the GPS unit on that and the harvest upgraded. So I'm just going to drive down to the dealership so you can see it as well. We're going to pick up the spare parts, but then we're going to do the work in our own workshop up here on the farm. So I'm just gonna um, find the car because <laughs> I haven't found it on a walk around. I'm sure it's around somewhere. I think it's actually sitting up on the other field with some uh, seed and fertilizer on supporting. So I'll just head up there and I will see you in a minute. Here we go. Um, we got here. Um, we got a helper working. He is planting the corn out in the field. Normally I would be playing on uh, times five speed in case you've noticed that we're down to times one. It's just while we're doing this little map tour, um, I didn't want time to run away from us, even though it's it's raining all day anyway. But here's our nice truck. And um, I got the banded trailer here with big bags and massive Ferguson drop nose with a front load on 
and that's ready to help fill the seats but we're going to leave the trailer here just for now and then we're going to head down we're going to pick up those eggs take them down to the campsite so you can see what that looks like that's don't know if the campers are going to be very happy on a wet day like today they might all be huddled up in the tents and caravans um, and then we're going to swing by the dealership and pick up those new GPS screens and get those installed and I think that will be about it for today's episode probably because I've already been nattering on for quite a long time but that's just because I'm actually really really impressed with this map I just love the feeling of it um, it just feels like a place where you can really get on with some farming and although I'm doing it in in single player and right now I don't have a lot of auto drive and uh, cosplay enabled I will be looking into that at some point but to begin with just using follow me and um, some reasonable equipment we will need to scale up the equipment to to be able to cope with it if, if we're going to start growing the, the fields um, it took me all of early spring on a nine day season cycle so full kind of three working days of daylight to um, to simply get the plowing done on a lot of these fields so this box is full so we're going to grab that one and put it in the back of the truck here ah, I guess we might as well take the other one as well I don't think it's entirely full but we don't make a ton of money out of, of these chickens right now but we're only just you know springtime it's, it's been um, it's still taking a while to um, to get the animals settled in and everything like that but we'll head down to the campsite and uh, over to the shop give you a chance to see a little bit of the map and uh, cover a little bit about some of the fields here in the beginning so as we come out of the farmyard right across the road is field 32 that's our grass field you might be able to see if I just hop out here that there's a little bit of the ridge up there that wasn't cut but as you notice we produced about I don't know 70 hay bales and 160,000 liters of grass or silage out of cutting the rest of it. There is that little corner left up there but that was because we were basically running out of time um, that day even though there were three workers going in the field at the same time. So I'm just going to hop in here while we drown, drive down to the trees. So yeah the fields are big um, but they're also really cool. Down here on our right hand side we got field 29 uh, where we're putting in wheat that's going to be producing hopefully quite well we can see maybe you can see I'll just hop through the hedge here we are starting to see just just a small clump of weed here fantastic feature of seasons finally rather than this sort of carpet coverage of you either have weeds or you don't um, I just love the fact that you're seeing these little clumps appearing we will need to to get the spray out um, might have to wait till tomorrow once the the rain dries dies down a bit but uh, we're going right over a big suspension bridge. There's a big valley here, and, um, and actually, there's a, there's a really cool waterfall over on this side here. So there's some really nice scenery as well. So at first glance, it might look like the map is quite flat, but as you're driving around, you actually realize there's a lot of details, and it's not so flat at all. Dayslon has done a fantastic uh, job of, of making this map into FS19. And if you don't already uh, follow his YouTube channel, uh, please consider doing so. Uh, I'll make sure I put a link both to the FS Nation post uh, where it was announced that the map was released, as well as to Dataland's uh, YouTube channel. So you can go and see he's doing a lot of experimentation with um, cosplay and auto drive on the map. Okay, so I actually just want to stop here at one of the road signs, hopefully we're not going to block traffic too much, but um, as you can see, we even get uh, distances on um, some of the places and all of the cell points or Y points on the map are really well signed. You're going to find these signs 
all over the map. Sometimes they're a little bit smaller, obviously, and they're not uh, quite as, as, as big a cross point as here. But generally speaking, I, you, you can use the big map um, for your overview. Um, the overview map that you use sort of in in game is probably not going to do an awful lot for you uh, on this map, except for maybe for finding a little side road or something like that. But there are so many signs on the road that you're really not going to be struggling to find your way. Here's another little kind of land bridge uh, across. You've got nice sailing boats. Um, that's the place we need to go to down there. Um, there's a bar right next to the campsite, which is a really nice little detail as well. Um, here's the dealership. Uh, we're going to be stopping by there on the way back. Uh, it's a very well supplied multi dealership, so we, we're not particularly forced into one particular brand of machinery here, anything like that. So there's lots of choices, lots of options on this map. It's it's really really nice. Um, today we're just going to go to the campsite. If we carry on down this road, you get down to the McCain cell point for potatoes and uh, the animal dealer as well. There's a huge uh, multi yard right next to the dealership um, that accepts our lot of different types of goods as well. Now I just have to try and remember where the road into the campsite is. Have I gone too far? No, nope, I think we're right here. So just swing in here. It's a nice set of solar panels. Uh, good to see some renewable industry in the area as well. Who knows, we might invest in a few solar panels um, for the farm at some point as well. That is if we get some, some decent harvest yield. Sorry, I keep hitting the trees here, but um, try and keep it a bit tighter. So here we are. We're up at the campsite. So if we carry on down to the berries, that's the campsite itself where we're going today. Uh, but we've got a little boat club, and uh, this boat club's got a cool little bar up on the roof section. Uh, if, if you have the map yourself, I, I encourage you to go and check it out. We'll probably come down. Um, on a day when, when we're having a bit of a break. But right now, we just gotta pop in and sell the eggs here. And onto the cell point. There we go. So, obviously not a huge amount of income from um, from the chickens right now, but it's it's still early spring and I'm confident that they'll start producing a bit more. And it's it's a good little deal to have going with the campsite to be able to supply the visitors to the area with eggs and everything like that so that's that's a nice little feature uh, there are one or two other places um, that will buy the eggs as well but I think we're gonna try and stick with supplying the campsite so we have some happy, happy campers in in the area as well so just a quick little stop into the dealership here now I've been playing so many UK maps um, that I, I have to try and concentrate on remembering to stay on the right side of the road right now. Uh, I live in the UK as well, uh, but used to drive on the right hand side of the road, so it should come back reasonably naturally. And here we can kind of open up a bit in speed. Nice long open roads, which is great when you're shifting st stuff in a truck as well. Dealerships coming up right here, and right up on the left there you have the huge uh, plant for basically accepting pretty much any type of grain, but they're not open all the time. They have opening hours. So here's the dealership. Today, uh, we're not kind of buying specific machinery. It's probably a bit rude to park just here in the middle, but they don't look too busy today. So I'm um, just gonna pop into the shop and pick up the spare parts for the um, GPS units. But as you can see, they got some, some nice equipment on sale and, and uh, Nice fancy workshop here as well. Okay, so that's the parts picked up. I'll just show you over here as well. Obviously, they are working on some stuff. They got Alexian in. Um, over here is, is the point if you need anything fixed. Um, you put it in this trigger and then uh, the point is over here. 
that works very well but now that we have a workshop up on the map we're gonna save a bit of money um, and get familiar with the equipment by installing these GPS units ourselves they're not cheap they're not cheap at all okay and that's a radio call in that um, the worker is out of seats so at some point we need to head up and just help with um, filling the cedar again but that can wait so I'm just gonna see if I can make it past here I'm not gonna try and make it past the cement truck with oncoming traffic and going around the corner just need to be a little bit patient instead but once we've got a bit of clear road here we should be able to oh dear this might not go well uh, there we go we made it past so there's a couple of roads you can take to the farm the one that we came down um, over the suspension bridge but you can also come in sort of via the other side of the farm you're basically coming in here's here's the field I talked about before but from the other side it's a very large field the only thing is there's a very steep hill here quite a steep incline so if you're pulling a heavy load you can find yourself slowing down quite a bit on this one unfortunately the field over here on, on this side is not ours not yet anyway we know that it's going to be about 360,000 euros to get it so it's, it's going to cost a bit but yeah, um, we're back on the farm. I'm gonna head down to the workshop and then we're gonna get the sprayer over so we can get the GPS unit mounted. And uh, I'm just gonna send one of the workers up with the car um, to the field so he can help out with um, getting uh, the cedar refilled up there in the meantime. So I'm up in the shed and I'm just picking up the um, horse sprayer because that's one of the first ones we want to get done for the new GPS unit. I'm going to take it down to the workshop and get the parts fitted. It costs about 15,000 euros per GPS unit, so these things are not cheap. But for something like a sprayer uh, with a wide reach and where you can't always tell exactly how far you've gone, I reckon it's really worth it. I'm just going to check that we're actually going to fit into the workshop here yeah we're fine like that so you can see we have the tank full of herbicide already but um, we need to customize this unit and we need to turn the GPS system on like that so this worker doesn't have an awful lot of seeds in the tank but that will be enough just to keep him going for a little while and just hop over and get things opened up for him and then if we can uh, it's not great with the seat getting wet and stuff like that but just try and get lined up here there we go okay so that's it empty just for now so he will need refilling again pretty soon but we can um, keep the worker going for a little bit so we can get back to doing the GPS units over on the farm. So we can take this one back and since we added it would be nice to get some of the tractors done as well but obviously I'm still a little bit cautious about how much money we're spending so um, we're going to do the harvester and the sprayer to begin with um, because the tractors are probably more or less okay. We're, we're basically seeding up the last field right now and we've done that without GPS although it could have been better with it. Um, but for, for the spraying and for the harvester here it's going to be absolutely essential. So we'll get this nice shiny new John Deere harvester driven down it's got zero hours on the clock right now so it's brand spanking new straight out of the shop I wish we'd remembered to order 
uh, or I'll have it supplied directly with it, but um, we'll get it retrofitted now and we'll try not to drill too many holes in the nice shiny new interior here. In we go, like so. And we'll get that customized. And we'll put the GPS system on that one as well. So we just spent 30,000 euros very, very quickly. <laughs> Money disappears really quickly on this map. Uh, I'm hoping we're going to get a seriously good harvest. That's the helper finished again. So you can actually see we now got the Starfire unit here on the um, John Deere, which is a nice little detail. Um, that comes obviously with the mod, even though it's still in development. Um, the guidance steering mod over from GitHub. Get that parked up, but yeah. So, I know we didn't get an awful lot done today, but you got to see a little bit of the map and, and what the current setup is, where we at with the, the few fields that we have, and see that there's a lot of work to do on a big farm like this. Um, next episode, we'll probably start looking into what we do with the cows a little bit, and um, probably get our new GPS fitted um, sprayer out to put some preemptive herbicide down, because we are starting to see just a few patches of um, weeds appear in the fields but that is it for first episode of, of a series that I'm actually really excited about here on Ayers Holt um, farm I think this is gonna be a, a really place great place to to run with seasons I hope you agree uh, drop a comment tell me what you think um, and if you do like hit that like on subscribe button for the channel but for now, it's thank you very much for Mobile Card Gaming, and see you again soon.